episode number 226, Take Camaro to School. Welcome to The Camaro Show, a podcast about all things Camaro and GM performance news. I'm Chris Frezzo. And I'm Jason Debler. We're your hosts for this week's episode of The Camaro Show. Want to be part of our show? It's easy. Just leave a message on our voicemail hotline at 586-486-3182. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. And welcome back, everyone, for another exciting episode of The Camaro Show. I'm Chris. I'm Jason. What's up, dude? Oh, man. Just enjoying the heck out of the weather because it's know. not... You know, the devil's Heine- Heine. <laughs> I was going to say Heineken. I know. It went from hundreds here last weekend to it, it cooled off to the 70s, then crept back in the 80s, and now today it's going to be back in the 90s. Yeah, but this morning I was sitting on my back patio, having a cup of coffee, just enjoying the weather. It wasn't burning. <laughs> burning. Burn. Yeah. So I, I, everything's pretty cool, man. Um. Gosh, just loving the weather, loving my car, loving the car life in general. Mm-hmm. Can't complain. Yeah. What are you up to? That's about it, man. About it. Enjoying the weather, enjoying the car, and uh, got a little bit of time off coming up this week. And next week at work, this is what I usually take a couple days off for the for the summertime, just to kick back, relax, catch up on stuff. Yeah. Cool. But we got some. We got some. Bang, we got a bang up episode this week. Yeah, we do. We got a lot of cool stuff to talk about. Something I thought would happen a lot, a long time ago. In fact, it did happen a while ago. Oh, yeah, I guess it did, didn't it? Yeah, and now it's back again. Uh, Big news, Camaro. uh, There's a a driving school now for Camaros was announced this week. Now, you, my friend, did Mm -hmm. a Camaro driving school. How many years ago was that? Um, Wasn't that a ninety late nineties or early two thousands? Hold on, I got my certificate on the wall right here in my office. Here, let me go check. Hold on. Wow, look at that. We he's even prepared. He's got the certificate and everything. And what we're talking about, ladies and gentlemen, is the Chevrolet Camaro Driving Academy, which was announced this week. It's a performance driving school exclusively for Camaro owners. Now available at Area Twenty Seven. But this is not the first time there's been a Camaro driving school. You, my friend. <laughs> Went That's to right. a driving school with the when they had exclusively fourth gens, right? Did they have Corvettes too? Well, actually, it was primarily Corvettes, but they also let you drive Camaros if you chose to. Okay. So it was known as the Bragg Smith School of Advanced Driving, and it was in in Pahrump, Nevada, okay. where currently a Spring Mountain Motorsports is. Yeah. And then it was just the main track, and some like um like air uh, like like. Uh, Temporary semi permanent airplane hangar type things. Okay. And a porta potty. <laughs> it wasn't the beautiful resort that it is now. And it is beautiful there. Oh, I love going there. I mm-hmm. love going there. It uh, and that was um I got my certificate. I graduated from that from dry, from the two day Cam- the, the Camaro class was a two day class. Okay. The Corvette class was a three day class. You could drive in the third day was a bit more advanced. But I graduated from the Camaro driving class January thirtieth. 2001. Wow. <laughs> wow. So uh, it'd be, you know, 19 years ago this January. I can't believe it's been that long. I still have video of that when I had this big ass Sony Handycam thing that was like, I don't know, 480p with mini DV cassettes or Old whatever. School. I don't remember. It was like, it was like a thousand dollar camera then. Old school. And uh, yeah, it was, it was pretty cool. And here's the thing is the Corvette guys thought they were all hot stuff and they were mostly very wealthy dudes. Like they talk about their entire car collection and everything. And here I am, you know, just a normal guy driving the <laughs> Camaro and I was the only one driving the Camaro. Everybody else had to drive the Corvettes. Okay. And um, yeah, I did all right in my Camaro compared to them when, because <laughs> the second day they let you free run the course and it, it was, it was, I did all right. And wow. So. But so, yes, so, so now you can now you can really do good. Yeah, there's a there's a there's a place in North America called Area Area 27. This is in um, it's in Canada. Um, let me read this. This uh, article was broken by our friends over at Muscle Cars and Trucks. Area 27 may be one of the best racetracks in North America that you haven't yet heard of, but it's nevertheless the track rat's equivalent of a yacht club. Built in 2016, the main attraction is a 4.83-kilometer racing circuit designed by 
Jacques Villeneuve, surrounded by world-class amenities, including a banquet room, locker rooms, classrooms, pro shop, most recently, an 11,000-square-foot clubhouse. Dang. Along with the announcement of the clubhouse was the announcement of the Chevrolet Camaro Driving School, exclusively with various 2019 Camaro models. Currently the sportiest and most athletic of all pony cars on the market. A fun fact, the Chevrolet Camaro Z01 Media Drive was held at this very track. Oh, there you go. Yep. Um, and, and I remember, I think I was I was heading to Vegas with, with my wife uh, for vacation, and I ran into Al. In the airport, and he was holding a he was he was uh, holding a, a helmet, and he said he was going to have some fun. <laughs> <laughs> I believe this is where he was going. Too fun. Um, pricing, it's, it's I mean it's up there. It's a two and a half day uh, driving academy. It starts at two thousand seven hundred ninety five dollars Canadian, and that runs up to four thousand sixty dollars Canadian. Oof. Oof. If the attendee opts to rent a Camaro from the facility, as well as bring a plus one for the course. The first class took place this past weekend, July 21st to the 23rd. Additionally, Chevrolet Camaro Driving Academy classes were going to take place September 4th to the 6th, October 14th through the 16th, and October 20th through the 22nd. Here's some other details about it. Um, it, it, you, you go through a classroom first. I mm-hmm. think you did the same thing, right? That's right. Yep. Uh, theory covering seating position, braking techniques. Yep. Finding the correct line through the corners. Yep. Uh, track safety, including mm-hmm. instruction on various flags and their meanings with proper pit entry and exit procedures. Mm-hmm. On the circuit, uh, it's braking and downshifting techniques, cornering phases, Linking turns and establishing correct lines, uh, full circuit follow the leader lapping. Finally, open lapping sessions with coach critiques, lapping session with student monitored for consistency improvement, and a uh, comprehensive performance evaluation. Uh, Area 27 is located in Canada's warmest climate, and then that's located in Oliver, British Columbia. It's a few hours east of Vancouver. Uh, the Chevrolet Camaro Driving Academy sounds akin to the Ron Fellows Performance Driving mm-hmm. School, which is a program aimed at Corvette owners at the Spring Mountain Motorsports Park outside of Las Vegas. Uh, we will link this article up in the show notes. And if you have a Camaro and you want to learn how to drive it to the best of its capability, this sounds like it's 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 a cool course. It does indeed. Nice. I wonder what kind of cars. I wonder if they're going to have ZL1s or 1LEs or just SSs. Hmm. Interesting. It is interesting. Yeah. A um, couple things about that. I did learn quite a bit um, at that at the class that I did a long time ago. And, and it sounds like the curriculum is very, very similar to what it was before, but probably a little bit more advanced as, you know, 18 years of driving experience right. would happen. They had they had really good um, course teachers. In fact, one of them is still there at Spring Mountain. Really? But but the one thing that is is they spent so much time on that I'm like, when do we get to drive the cars, you know? Yeah. Um, but what is driver position, steering wheel position. You know, it used to be you'd, you'd slink way back and you'd you'd put the steering wheel in your in your in your lap, you know, and you'd feel all studsy and everything. But man, they you learn so much. You learn heel toe shifting, which I still use to this day. My wife thinks I'm a douche when I do it, but uh, <laughs> when I down, when I downshift in the Corvette to, to make a turn, I do the heel toe bump, and and she's like, "Why do you do that?" I'm like, "Cause it's good for everything. It's the way to do it." And uh, so you, you learn, you, you know, in the two days I was there, I still remember things nearly 20 years later. I remember so, you telling me. We had to learn how to shift and shift and shift and shift and <laughs> God. We probably spent four hours just shifting. <laughs> That's it. Um, just back. You just everybody got a section, a straight section of track, and that was your section. And all you did was just go back and forth, back and forth. And the instructor was sitting there watching you, and and saying, "Okay, a little bit faster here, a little bit slower there, and move your foot a little bit over here." He said. I can tell you're a drag racer by the way you, that you shift your car. <laughs> <laughs> and he, he got to the point after about the second hour, you're just kind of like you just you're doing it purely out of habit. Yeah. You just you're just doing it like muscle like, memory, like, like you're riding a bike. Yeah. And he's like he's like you know what you're doing. And she goes, in fact, if you want to let me out right here, I'm gonna go get something to drink. You just keep going. <laughs> <laughs> it, it was cool, man. I'll never forget it. 
Um, but this is even cooler because wow. it's strictly Camaro. It's yeah, it's expensive, but if you want to learn how to drive a car the right way from professionals, from professionals that know exactly what they're doing, it's almost like taking it. Like you, you know, uh, the other analogy I use is you know everybody knows how to point a gun and shoot it when they go to the gun range, mm-hmm. but until you actually go through extensive shoot house training with an instructor that tells you all the things you've been doing wrong your whole life, <laughs> that's when you really can appreciate what you do. And this is no this is no different. So I'm I'm I would love to do this. Wow. Yeah, wouldn't that be fun? Wow. Let's go out. Let's go out there. Let's do it. <laughs> so, very cool. Check this out. How can people learn more, Chris? Uh, go to Muscle Cars and Trucks, and I'm going to link that up in the show notes. There's uh, the article in there. Yeah. Gosh, that's cool. It's expensive, but you're going to learn a lot. Yeah. You want to learn how to drive well? This is the way to do it. Yeah. Okay. Too cool. What's ne- next, buddy? Next thing, down under. Oh, boy. Australia, mate. The fun police are out in force. <sighs> Yeah, apparently, uh, you know, they got the ZL1 down down under now, right? Doing down that. under, down under. Um, and 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 this this article also comes to us from Muscle Cars and Trucks. They say part of the allure of, of owning a muscle car is that raucous noise that spews from the tailpipe. <laughs> In fact, automakers automakers have scores of engineers that focus on making a sound that making that sound. From the car, well, like you said, the fun police in, in Australia they need to uh, they need to pass drive by uh, drive by noise regulations and and uh, these regulations cap noises at seventy four decibels for cars with automatic transmissions and seventy five decibels with cars with manual transmissions. So uh, we don't know what the ZL one registered to pass regi- reg- regulations, but we imagine H- HSV did everything it could to keep the car as loud as possible <laughs> and still be able to import the pony car, convert it to right-hand drive and sell it. Uh, so this is, this is funny with, uh, so they have to do this as resonators are specifically what gives the ZL one its hush tone in Australia. That's not to say it's weak, but per the report, the high performance Camaro does not have the same snarl. Americans can enjoy day in and day out. With the resonators attached, ADR regulations mandated the car must make two passes for sound measurements on each side of the car. The test driver launches the car at full throttle for about 25 feet to take the measurement. Thankfully, the Camaro ZL1 passed. It's a rather rigorous process that could have kept the Camaro ZL1 out of Australia if it weren't for the dedicated gearheads at HSV. I, I, uh, they, I mean, they they want this car there, so they're gonna they're gonna have to put in the the resonators to mm-hmm. to pipe it down a little bit. Pipe it down. <laughs> pipe it pipe. down. You need to pop that down. <sighs> this makes me laugh. Oh man, some of the coolest people I've ever met in my life are from Australia. <laughs> I know. They know how to have a good. They have know how to have a good time too. Mm-hmm. Man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully. Uh, Chris, you and I were talking about this just before we started recording. You know, we're starting to talk about SEMA. SEMA's coming up in a couple coming months. Up. Wow, because we're already at the end of July, so it's it's our time where we start planning. Yep. And you, you're going to be there again this year? Yeah, well, yeah, I'm definitely got to make it this year. I missed it last year for the first time in many years. So maybe we could partner up with those muscle cars and trucks guys and we can have like a big bang blowout. Well, that would be cool. Beer fest. Beer fest. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. They seem like cool dudes. They're bringing, they're killing it with the news, huh? Yeah. You know, we have to, we, we might have to move our venue this year since they tore down Octane mm. at Excalibur. You know, I was never the biggest fan. Speaking of Down Under, of the <laughs> Thunder from Down Under, being, yeah. being right there. I, uh, I, liked, I thought it was a good meeting place. I really did. I mean, you could mill around. But when all the stud horses came out with their herpes on their face and, and everything came out of the all male review, whoa, whoa! I don't think people were actually what you're pretty, talking about. That, they only came out that one year. Yeah, we we still were still meeting there, and they were funny. Yeah, <laughs> those dudes. So, but anyway, yeah. So so if you're gonna go to SEMA or you're in the Las Vegas slash California slash Arizona slash New Mexico area and you want to come and meet us, <laughs> and buy we're us gonna a beer. Be in, <laughs> Yeah, jump on a plane, whatever it takes. It'll be fun. Yeah, but we'll be more about that in the future. We're yes. going to be there at, at SEMA first week in November. Yeah. 
Um, speaking of events that I missed, I haven't been to Camaro Superfest in a while. Yeah. I didn't make it this uh, year. Just had other things going on, but um, they uh, they they raise a lot of money this year, and their charity their charity that they chose this year was the Fallen and Wounded Soldiers Fund. They raised twenty five thousand three hundred seventy six dollars and ten cents. Oh, that is great. That's a wow. lot of money. Wow, dang! So their goal so, was eighteen thousand, and they they crushed it. So. Uh, thanks, Barry, and and all you guys for what you do, man. That's that was incredible. Special thanks to a lot of other people too. I'm, I'm looking at their Facebook post now. Oh boy, oh that's funny. Uh, <laughs> Lula Ritchie Chevrolet Eastern Michigan Camaro Club, Lingenfelder Porman Engineering, City of Ypsilanti, Camaro Z28 dot com. <laughs> Camaro Forums, Camaro News, National Parts Depot, Vanguard Motor Sales, Eckler's All Gen, Camaro Parts, Ace Sanitation, Destination Ann Arbor, Corrigan Oil, Livernoy Motorsports, Barnett Roofing, Rick and Rockies Auto, Novi Stretch, Chris Strangler's Customs, My Mechanics Place, Cruise News, Napa of Plymouth, Hot Rod and Racing Expo, Haggerty Insurance, and all of our participants. It takes a lot to raise that kind of money, and boy, a lot of people stepped up. That is awesome. awesome. Love that. Very cool. Good job, Very everybody. Good, yeah. Let's see if we can get that to 30000 next year. Yeah, that's right. <coughs> do, what, what do we got for uh, what do we got for voicemails? We do have voicemails. We have oh. uh, a couple voicemails this week, so Dying. let me go with the first one. Okay. Hey guys, it's Mudbone. Uh, I just listened to the show, and uh, if I hadn't said uh so much, I might have gotten in under the two minute wire. Thanks uh, so much for your kind uh, comments. I appreciate that. Um, I thought that the um, uh, the business about the Camaro, uh, excuse me, the Corvette being under sixty thousand uh, dollars, that was a shock to me. That's a, I hadn't really seen the price, and hearing that that is uh, where that is starting makes that car very interesting. Uh, I'm like you; I would have thought it would have been much more expensive given all the changes, and. Um, I am looking forward to seeing one, and actually, uh, I might test drive one and see about buying one. So, well, I'll keep you posted. Keep up the good work, and uh, I am enjoying the show. So take care. Bye. Mudbone. <laughs> Mudbone. Thanks for calling in. He just finished his voicemail from last week. That is impressive. Cool, man. Do we we touched on that last week? Under sixty thousand, and I've seen a lot of people talking about this this week. A lot. Mm-hmm. Why? Why? How can Chevrolet get this car, this and all, and purpose, uh, intents and purposes, a supercar, under sixty thousand, a two point eight zero to sixty supercar, and um, it's making people think twice about what their next vehicle is going to be. Keys in point. Yep. Mustang GT500 was announced a few months back, right? We talked about it. Mm-hmm. It's going to be a 700 plus horsepower car. Um, it's going to be also be a 75,000 plus car, maybe up to even 100,000. Not even half as capable of what this C8 Corvette is going to be at under 60,000. Mustang's probably kicking, or Ford's probably going, oh, shh. <laughs> We're not going to make any money here. Oh. The Ford GT, which probably costs upwards of $400,000, can't even compete with the C8. <sighs> we're, I think we're going to see a lot of them <laughs> on the road. Like, like now it's like, hey, cool, Corvette. Hey, cool, Corvette. Yeah. Once in a while. Uh, you know, I did some re- I just did some looking around just real quick. Um, the, the speculation is that there's going to be and this has been rumored for a while, a portfolio of Corvette models, meaning potential Corvette SUV. Yeah, I read that too. Yeah, we've heard that before. Um, it's just an economy of scale. Uh, let's see here. Or a, or a Corvette-based Cadillac offering to spread out those development costs. Well, like the XLR? Y- yeah, exactly, which, which wasn't the biggest hit. It was kind of a hit, but it wasn't big enough to... Uh, let's see. G- uh, let's see. This is Car Buzz, Motor Authority. Oh, Motor Motor Authority. Okay, I spoke with uh, Mark Royce. Digital vehicle platform. I'm, I'm not seeing it. over the air. What is this? Yeah. Okay. So I'm not really getting the answer here. Bruh. <laughs> you know, it's, it's fifty nine ninety ninety five. 
you know, it's going to be five bucks shy. Plus, you know, you start adding options and it's not going to stay close to that at all. Yeah. God, it's, it is such a good looking car, though. It looks better than I thought it would. Yeah. It's going to be weird to lift such a short hood on a Corvette. <laughs> I think I, I think I can see one in my future as well. Wow. If if there's not a Camaro in my in my garage, there's probably going to be a C8 Corvette in a couple of years. Wow. It'll be you know what? It'll wow. be my 50th birthday present. Perfect. There you go. There you go. Well, we want to hear from you guys too. Are are you guys loving on this new C8 Corvette? Are you still, you know, I mean, this is the Camaro show. But we also, you know, our, our tag here is all GM performance vehicles. Mm-hmm. We want to know what you're, what you're loving about this car. And here's how. Hey, want to be part of this show? Well, we want to hear from you. Just hit our digits at 586-486-3182, 24 hours a day. Leave us a message and we'll feature it in an upcoming show. So what are you waiting for? Do it now. All right, let's move on to the next voicemail. Yeah. Hey, Chris and Jason, this is Sean from Oceanside. I saw the uh, Corvette reveal the other day, and uh, wow, what a beautiful car. It's amazing. I'm uh, really uh, glad that Chevrolet came out with it. What did I, I hope to see is that the uh, new LT2 uh, motor will find its way into the Camaro. I think that would be kind of a great way to differentiate between the base model V8 Camaro. I think that's called the LT2 the LT1, I can't remember, but have the uh, the current LT1 motor in the base model V8 Camaro, and then have the LT2 in the, in the SS, I think that would be kind of a, uh, a great way to differentiate the two models as well. Anyway, that's just what I wanted to share. I hope you guys are having a great week. Talk to you later. Bye. Thanks for calling in, Sean. Yeah, it's, it's interesting. Interesting. Yeah, so the base model now, the base V8 model is going to be called the LT1. Mm-hmm. And uh, we 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 touched on this a little bit too. How long do you think it's going to take before the LT2 goes into the Camaro? Exactly. Yep. And then they could have definitely a differentiator between the base V8 and the uh, maybe the the higher models, and you can get mm-hmm. the LT2 in there. You know, pump up another fifty horsepower out of it. One thing's for sure, it's not going to get worse. Well, <laughs> no, I, I shouldn't say that. You never know what the the government's going to mandate, but. Huh. It's 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 we're we're still in the heyday we're still in the in the upswing things are just just even more awesome yeah <laughs> just can't believe how awesome things are getting when it yeah, comes to cars I know I know uh, and we thought for sure that things were dead <laughs> it's 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 taken a little bit it's taken a bit of a downslide when you think about it yeah okay still still doing great cool uh, let's move on to our last voicemail here hey Chris and Jason this is Charlie one 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 I wanted just to call and say uh, it was great seeing you guys again uh, well, this year over at the Camaro Fest and all that. Jason, we've seen you know we've seen each other for a couple of years and all that, but Chris, it was an actual absolute pleasure just seeing you, you know, for you know, in first person. And you are taller than I actually thought. <laughs> I hope you guys enjoy those beers. Uh, that 7K is probably one of my favorites, just because it actually gets distributed all over Arizona and New Mexico. So I hope you enjoy that one. And the uh, Cholo Stout is kind of a no joke in regards to its robustness and all that. Um, I hope you guys had fun at Camaro Fest. I wish we could have hung out a lot more, but, um, you know, such is life, right? So you guys take care of yourselves and uh, talk to you soon. Bye. Charlie, one, 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 one. It was great to finally meet you too, buddy. Yeah. Too cool. Uh, thank you so much for the beers. Sorry, you couldn't hang out more. Um, I am. I have those beers in my fridge, and I am going to have one on my birthday. I'm gonna have. Uh, I want that seven K. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna save that one for my birthday, and I'm gonna drink that one Tuesday. So I will let yeah. you know what I think, Charlie. Yep, and I've got them in my fridge too. I've been saving them for a special occasion, and um, do you know what that occasion is? Today. Yeah, it's Saturday. <laughs> I'm gonna drink them. <laughs> That's funny. That's I probably funny. will too. Wow. Yeah. That's cool. Hey, I just saw that Bell's was it Bell's? No, it was Founders. Founders just announced that they have reached the fiftieth state. They're now distributed in Hawaii. So they are doing all fifty states now. So you can get your all day IPA and all your good stuff from Founders. Oh gosh. All day it's like the standby. Yeah. If they don't have my local home style, which uh, the the local pizza joint, um Long Hollow Pizza and Pub. 
Val and I met for work after that. Guess what? They got Bearded Iris Homestyle there really? now. Nice. Yeah. On draft, oh, huh? On draft. If you ever get a chance to get Bearded Iris Homestyle and you like a good hazy IPA, man, that is a winner. Mm-hmm. That is a wiener, man. Um, have you gone back to Yazoo since they opened it right over by you? I have not. I have not because I typically drink at home. Oh, okay. Cool. Um, work on my car and play in my garage. But, Charlie, thank you so much, buddy. Uh, always a guest. Always welcome to be a guest here in Nashville if you ever come through again. And, of course, we will do the same. Oh, you know what? You guys got to make SEBA. Oh, yeah. They're, he's in New Mexico, right? Or Arizona? Yeah, it's, it's only like probably a five-hour drive or six or seven-hour drive. Oh, you should try it. I, I, don't, I don't know for sure how far away he is from it. So, yeah. Cool, man. Thanks for the voicemail. Uh, we got, what else we got here? Well, we, we've had something on the end that we, we should have addressed a couple weeks ago. Um, we, oh, lost, yeah. we, we lost a leader uh, in the automotive business. We lost Lee Iacocca. I mean, he was a today. huge, huge figurehead here in Detroit. I remember the whole thing with Chrysler mm-hmm. um, back when they thought Chrysler was going to die. And he came in and, and he turned the ship around. And he was just a huge figurehead. Um, he was at Ford. Before both, that, he was at he, Ford, right? He, he was at Ford. He was, his major triumph was the Mustang in 1964. Wow. And then after that, he found himself uh, managing the entire Ford and car, Ford car and truck programs. Um, Continental Mark III. Part of the Pinto program. Pinto. <laughs> Boom. Uh, <laughs> but he was also part of the front-wheel drive escort program, which today you, I don't think you ever see an escort anymore. No, but you it, don't. It, it, but Ford made, sold a lot of those cars, yes, man. they did. Um, let's talk about Chrysler, the K car. That You don't see too many of those either. In fact, my wife's first car was a K car wagon manual transmission that she still misses. Bruh. Man. Let's see here. Uh, this is according to Haggerty. Iacocca's next challenge made him a household name, moved to Chrysler in 1979, tasked with the job of saving a company on the edge of bankruptcy, secured massive loans from the federal government, and launched the front-wheel drive K-Car. The company not only paid back its loans, $1.2 billion plus interest, it did it seven years early. Wow. That's that's somebody that knows how to turn a big steer a big ship. Wow. We, we at Chrysler borrow money the old-fashioned way. We pay it back. <laughs> So the how about the minivan? And he wrote three books. Oh, of course, he, yeah. Didn't wasn't he part of the Viper too? The, all that stuff, man. I got to read one of his books. He wrote a book in '84 called Iacocca and Autobiography. I got to read that book. Yep. He said the depression turned me into a materialist. Years later, when I graduated from college, my attitude was, "Don't bother with philosophy. I want to make ten thousand a year by the time I'm twenty-five, and then I want to be a millionaire." He tried to enlist in the armed forces but he had rheumatic fever as a child, so he focused on his education. This is a person that was very, very focused and very, very driven, and he saw the bigger picture. And if it weren't for him, the entire landscape as we know it today would have been changed, despite the fact that we're talking about the K-Car and the Escort. We're also talking about a great business person. The Continental... Well, he's like see... the Babe. He's like Babe Ruth, retired Chrysler executive Bennett E. Bidwell told the New York Times, "He hit home runs and he struck out a lot, but he always filled the ballpark." So, had a great run, man. Ninety-four years old, passed away July third. Oh. Important. And then finally, we got one last thing we've been meaning to cover, but let's talk about we've been talking so much about C7 Corvette, and I even lace in my C6 Corvette, but just because I like talking about my car, who doesn't? <laughs> but the uh, the very last front engine Chevrolet C7 Corvette sold for. $2.7 million wow. for Barrett Jackson. Dang. Yep. And all proceeds of that sale go to the Stephen Siller Tunnel to Towers Foundation. I don't know what that is. I don't know either. <laughs> uh, but it was beautiful uh, Z06. Let's see here. Tunnel to Towers, which helps pay off mortgages. Okay, beautiful. This is good. Which helps pay off mortgages for the families of first responders that were killed in the line of duty and builds mortgage-free, accessible smart homes for injured service members. Wow. The foundation was named after Stephen Siller, a New York City firefighter who died on September 11, 2000. Excuse me, September 11, 2001. Every dollar from the sale will go to the foundation. GM has been a supporter of the foundation for the past few years. The first production 2019 ZR1 was auctioned off to benefit and it sold for 925000 Wow. $2.7 million. That's going to buy some, some great houses for people that definitely deserve them. Yeah. Man, congratulations on that. Wow. I'm trying to find out who bought it. Do you think it was... Uh, I don't think it says. Who bought it? Uh, holding the check is our veterans. Lucky owner. 
Well, this was dated 628 because uh, mm. it hadn't been built yet. Yep. Let's see here. I, 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 I wonder who it is. I don't know if it was in, was it in Vail? No, maybe there's an updated article. I'm looking around for it right now. Yeah. The identity of the buyer has not been revealed. This was Fox News, June 29th. So okay. it, it's been about a month. God, you know, whoever you are, good for you, man. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, 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 and there's a poll at the bottom of Fox News. What was there on June 29th? The poll is, oh, I refreshed the page and it went away. Oh, shoot, man. It was, what kind of Corvette? Oh, here it is. Any, what kind of Corvette do you think Chevy should build? Front engine? Mid engine. 60% said front engine. <laughs> Oops. Oh, crap. Well, you know what? I, I think that we all are, if you didn't yeah. like the idea, you do now. Yeah. All right. All right. Is that, are we are we done for this week? Oh, yeah, yeah. It was a great show. Great show. Great show. We always thank everybody for for tuning in and listening. Absolutely. And we will yep. be back at it again next week. So we'll see you then. You got Bye. it. Thanks for listening to the Camaro Show. Don't forget, drop us a voicemail at 586-486-3182. We'll see you next week. See, see ya. ya.